Ask for a better day. Blue skies, some white puffy clouds, wind blowing out to center field. And we are underway. First pitch strike for Mason Nichols. Javero January is the home plate umpire today. Eric Gauthier at first, Eddie Newsom at second. Scott Klein is at third base. Rashawn hitting 339 on the year. It's a hitter's day today. It is warm. As you said, wind's blowing out. It's blowing out pretty good. Fastball for strike two at 91 miles an hour. Here you see that flag, and that is blowing straight out. It's going to help every ball hit today. We are almost to the point of the year where that wind kind of becomes Consistently. predominantly out of the south. The 0-2 pitch to Mershon goes down swinging. About as good a start as you can draw it up for Mason Nichols. You know, change up is a pitch that he has been working on, and you see a good one right here. Look at that ball dive away from Mershon. As you said, good start for Mason Nichols in the Rebels. First career start last week against the Arkansas Razorbacks. Three and two-thirds, three hits, just one run allowed. Walked three, struck out four in that game, but it was a loss for Ole Miss on the road. Just missed inside there with a fastball to Hunter Hines, the junior from Madison, Mississippi. He looks the part and has really heated up in conference play. Nine home runs on the year, six of those in league play. He didn't need to win last night. He absolutely crushed one in the 11th. Check swing, strike one, one ball and one strike. I think they said 437 feet last night. It was pretty. It was one of those great exit velocity, obviously great launch angle. I mean, it was a very pretty home run. 1-1 one, one to Hines. He pops this one up. And it's going to drift a few rows into the seats for strike two. So a ball and two strikes now to Hunter Hines. I think Kyle Peterson said on the broadcast last night, he's like, something about left-handed hitters when they hit one of those. It was a majestic bomb. Majestic is a great word. It was an absolute no-doubter. And at the time, certainly made Mississippi State feel like great opportunity to win the ball game. One ball, two strikes to Hunter Hines. That was just off the outside corner. Let's change up again. Good take by Hines. Ball starts in the zone, fades away. Nice piece of hitting. Two hits on the weekend for Hunter Hines. A couple of runs driven in. The 2-2. Two -two. Got him on the off speed. Goes down swinging back-to-back -back strikeouts for Mason Nichols to start the game. Rebels defensively, similar lineup on back-to-back -back strikeouts to start the game. Up and in for ball one to Dakota Jordan. What a year the draft-eligible sophomore is having. 15 home runs, 48 runs batted in, and a 371 average. Over the top of the breaking ball. Count evens at one and one to Dakota Jordan. Yeah, the bat speed's just something. Ball just jumps off his bat. There are certain guys, you know, you watch them take BP, and the ball just comes off their bat differently than the other guys. Dakota Jordan is one of those kind of players. Fouls it back. Mason Nichols has worked ahead to all three hitters. Mississippi State coming in 22 and 13 overall and even 7 and 7 in the Southeastern Conference. The 1 2 from Nichols. Big bouncer to the left side. Fisher will have to hurry the throw, and it is not in time. That's an infield single for Dakota Jordan, and Fisher did all he could on that one. Yeah, you knew it was trouble for Fisher when that ball stayed in the air as long as it did. That first big hop. Jordan can really get down the line. I don't, don't think anything else Fisher can do here. You got to wait for the ball to come down. Gets rid of it quickly, and Jordan beats it easily at first. Always helps that batting average, and you can leg out some infield hits. That brings Connor Hyzak to the plate for Mississippi State, Dakota Jordan. You see good speed there. You've seen it in the outfield as well, but he's not a guy that runs a ton on the bases, just two for two. He had stolen bases this season. First pitch strike to Connor Hyzak. 
Isaac, the leading hitter for Mississippi State in conference play, 352. Five of his seven home runs have come in SEC play. And he lines this one foul and is behind in the count 0 2. When State runs, they make it. 43 for 47 on the season stolen bases. Wow. It's picking your spots. That is, <laughs> that is effective job on the bases by the Bulldogs. Isaac batting in the cleanup hole. Bryce Chance waits on deck. Mason Nichols has been a big part of the Ole Miss pitching staff for the last three seasons. 2022, he had 21 relief appearances. Last year, 23 relief appearances. This is 13th appearance of the year. And his second career start. He almost been trying to figure out that weekend rotation really since the SEC season started. As we said, Mason Nichols had a good performance last week at Arkansas on Sunday. Mike Bianca would like to see that again this afternoon. One ball, two strikes to Connor Hyzak. Off the end of the bat, pops it up. Just on the edge of the outfield grass. He'll make, of course, Jackson Ross had a big night at the plate as well. And a three-quarter swing from Luke Hill for strike one. And he's behind in the count, no balls and two strikes. Good location there with the fastball from Sierra. 0-2 on the year, 7.36 ERA. Hill, the sophomore from Baton Rouge. Goes the opposite way. Larry going to his left, able to field it, make a good throw to first in time to get the out. First out of the ball game. Gets from the fans at Swayze Field. The first time his name is announced as a hitter. Big swing there by Ethan Groff. It's a good play by Larry. Last night, Larry had an error late in the game, kind of in between hop, got, got on him a little quicker maybe than he thought. Ball always finds you. Right back out there today. It was a nice start for Amani Larry. One ball, one strike, and one out in the inning. This one off the fist over to first base, and Hines easily makes the catch for the second out of the inning. So good start on the mound for Evan Sierra. He's that efficient. He may be able to give Chris Lamonis more than two or three innings. And that was the first off speed. There was five straight fastballs. That was a slider. We got all in on the fists of Groff. Andrew Fisher. Fisher takes that pitch low for ball one. Fisher was 0 for 4 in Friday night's game one of the series. 0 for 5 last night, so still looking for his first hit of the weekend, and he takes a strike there. Fisher was hitting up around 330. His average is now falling to 278. Took a little bit of a cold snap in the heart of conference play. Behind in the count, a ball and two strikes. Sierra trying to have a 1-2-3, bottom of the first. Fisher gets a piece of it to stay alive. Yeah, we've seen teams lately with Fisher. They want to pitch him in, and then they go soft away late in the count. Sierra right there with a good change up down and away. Fisher able to spoil it. Mississippi State shifted on the left-handed hitter. This is a bouncer up the middle, behind the bag at second. The throw is not in time. Fisher beats it out for an infield single. Just big hop. He had to go back and get it. Fisher going to get. Looks like that's a good call at first base. 
Marshawn had to take an angle that kind of took him deeper because of the hop he that did. it got. Yeah, if he, I don't know that he could even come get it, but if he did, the hop would have been nearly impossible to handle. I think he played that the only way he could. Fisher were able to just beat that throw to first, and because of his angle, just couldn't get a lot on that throw. Marshawn couldn't. Here's Ethan Leger, whose average is up to 350. The senior from Abbeville, Louisiana, nine home runs. Had a big home run in last night's game. He's now driven in 33 on the year. Two down in the inning, runner at first. It's bottom of the first. It looks just like the top of the first did. This one popped into foul territory. Hines giving a chase, and that one's going to go just beyond the camera well into the seats. Nice giveaway. Heads up down there. Way to be ready to go, Jeff. Ball on a strike to Leger. Ethan Leger in conference play hitting 288. Three of his nine home runs have come in SEC games. Lazy has really unique stance. He is way off the plate. Most college guys a lot closer to home plate, and he kind of almost walks his way into the plate. He lifts this ball to left field, and that ball is gone, and Ole Miss takes a 2-0 lead on the 10th home run of the year for Ethan Leger. Talked about how well he has been swinging the bat. So I have a good start here for Sunday for Leger. Like off speed right there, ball kind of running into Leger, and he did not miss it. That was a line drive off the back of the bullpen. Home run that he hit last night was on a breaking ball that stayed up in the zone. Ole Miss strikes first with a couple of hits, an infield single followed by a two-run home run from Ethan Leger, and now Will Furness to the plate. And Furness rips this ball out into right field. Jordan picks it up on a couple of hops. A two-out single for the Rebel DH, Will Furness. You know, in the eighth inning last night, Mississippi State led 7-3. Ole Miss scored four runs to tie the game in the bottom of that eighth inning, and they took an incredibly aggressive approach. A lot it, of It was in like eight pitches, I think, that they scored the four runs, three yeah. four runs. It was a very, yeah, agreed. It was a very aggressive approach. And you're going to get a lot of fastballs. We talked about it with Sierra. You're going to see some fastballs. Ole Miss knows that. And Sierra, who's cruising through the first two, and then just an infield base hit. It's crazy how baseball can go. Things can change so quickly. You get the infield hit, and then a couple line drives. One of them leaves the ballpark, and it's a 2-0 game. Jackson Ross, who was the hero last night for Ole Miss, had the two-run single in the bottom of the 12th inning that gave the Rebels the win, 10-9. Went three for five with a couple of runs scored last night. He missed a couple of home runs by a total of probably three or four feet. Two doubles off the left field wall. It was good for Ole Miss to see, too, because Ross has struggled some recently. Got up to a great start this year. Had not been swinging as well recently. I think the crowd thought that was up. One ball, two strikes to Jackson Ross. Sierra trying to get out of the inning with no more damage. And he gets a swing and a miss on a fastball at 92. They do agree on. Two to nothing, Ole Miss. This ball hit into center field. Groff, a few steps back, reaches up and makes the catch. That was first pitch swinging off the bat of Bryce Chance. One pitch, one out here in the second inning. Mississippi State second baseman, Amani Larry. I think the hope for the Bulldogs is that before long, Larry will slide back into a DH spot. Because of some injuries, they've had to move things around. Aaron 
excuse me, Dylan Cup, freshman, who's been good for the Bulldogs this year, plays a good defensive shortstop. He's had a bruised knee and has been out about three weeks now. In doing so, they've had to take David Mershon and move him to short. Amani Larry has gone to second base with Cup out of the lineup. When they get him back, you'll see, I think, Cup go back to short, Mershon back to second base, which is probably the best defensive alignment for Mississippi State on the infield to go along with Kohler and Hines, and you'll have Larry back in the DH spot. But right now, figuring out that DH role has been a challenge for Mississippi State. We'll see Michael O'Brien in the DH spot today. The 1-2. This one hit in the air to left. Shallow, Leger, long run, comes in, settles, lost his hat, and makes the catch. Yeah, we didn't get a lineup till late today, and, and I think your understanding, Richard, was they were basically seeing how guys swung it in BP to decide who was going to DH today. I think that's exactly the case. And... Aaron Downs has hit as a DH for a while, struggled over the last couple of weeks. Steven Spolita got the start at the DH in yesterday's game. Michael O'Brien, though, who does not have a hit this season. He's played in 14 games, but only three at bats, 0 for 3 this year, and has walked twice. One of those walks came last night, the 1-0. One ball and one strike now to Michael O'Brien. He's batting in the seven hole in the lineup. Johnny Long and Logan Kohler will follow. Off the end of the bat over toward the Mississippi State dugout. Fly out by chance to center, fly out to left by Larry. And now Michael O'Brien Trying to keep this inning going for Mississippi State. Bulldogs trailing two to nothing here in the top of the second. O'Brien lifts it out into left field. Leger moving over. And it is a one, two, three inning with three fly ball out. Looking out and people still continue to kind of make their way into the stadium. Campbell Smithwick leading off for Ole Miss. Smithwick coming off his best game as a Rebel. Three for five last night with two runs batted in and a run scored, and he stays hot with a single through the right side of the infield. Campbell Smithwick was a highly regarded high school baseball player, decided to forego the draft, came to Ole Miss as a catcher, and it was just hard for him behind the plate and kind of lost his starting spot, and this weekend, last couple of games, gets started right field. Yeah, I think that's, well, obviously that's exactly what happened. He, he was struggling catch, and I think that was carrying over some offensively, and then they set him for a while. He's a really good athlete. Played right field last night. Matter of fact, the first two balls of the game hit to him in right field last night. This ball hit the opposite way past Hines. Eli Birch with an opposite way single. Smithwick goes first to third, and Ole Miss has runners at the corners with nobody out. Already leading two to nothing here in the bottom of the second. Nice job by Birch here. Keeps the hands inside. Gets on top of that ball. That ball's up and out of the zone. You got a big hole on the right side. And hits that ball hard. Smithwick easily goes first to third. And Rebels have something going here in the second. Nine-hole hitter, Braden Randall. Shortstop coming to the plate. Lefty-righty matchup here. Mike Bianco flipped Randall and Hill at short and second base. Last weekend, starting with the Arkansas series, and Braden Randall played a good shortstop last weekend. Presumably some of that to take some pressure off of Hill, maybe offensively as well. Yeah, I, I think that it appears that has worked well. Hill's played good at second. Randall certainly has held his own at short, and he's going to get a sack fly right here. Fly ball out into center field, caught by Hyzak. His throw comes back towards second base. Smithwick tags up and scores, and Ole Miss leads 3 to nothing. Ole Miss can hit some sack flies. Good day to get that ball up in the air today. Going to go plenty deep. No chance for Hyzak in center to do anything, but keep Birch over at first base. 
14th RBI of the year for Braden Randall. Ole Miss leads the SEC in sacrifice flies. That's the 25th of the season. And now back to the top of the order in Luke Hill, who grounded out to second his first time up. Mississippi State keeping an eye on Eli Birch over at first base. Ole Miss, not quite as many stolen bases as Mississippi State, but similarly, they have been effective when they have run. 39 of 44 on the year. Yeah, Ole Miss was running more early in the season. It certainly slowed down some recently in SEC games. Some of that's because scores, have, they've just fallen behind. It's much harder to run when you're behind in games. Hill behind in the count, no balls and two strikes. The 0-2. That one just missed. Wow. Mm. Maybe a little low for Javero January. It certainly was one. If I was Hill, I would not want to take again. Good, really good pitch by Sierra. So much of what you think about with Hunter Hines is what he does offensively, but he plays a good defensive first base. In charge with four errors on the year. Strike three called, and Hill goes away looking, and he took he did. that <laughs> same pitch that was called a ball a moment ago <laughs> and goes away. Those pitches were very close. He said that time Hill does not get the call, so he might be Inko. Checking out this beautiful day here in Oxford today. He likes where his team is, up 3-0 early. I think Bianco watched the end of last night's game from the coach's office, locker room, got a little bit of an early exit. He disagreed with the fact that Johnny Long was not ejected after a bat flip following his home run. And had a pretty animated conversation with Scott Klein, the home plate umpire. What is it's Johnny Long behind the plate? Didn't Ethan Groff batting two outs in the inning, behind in the count 0-1. It didn't take Bianco long to get on the field after the game, though. He was definitely out there celebrating with the team on the walk-off. Mike Bianco, not a guy that has been ejected much in his 24 years at Ole Miss. We were talking with Ron Polk before the game today. He said he's got the SEC record with seven ejections in a single season. Groff out in front of this one. Long strike there. Well, ejections across the board have gone down because there's basically no arguments anymore because you just review, and then you can't argue after that. Last night was definitely an argument. Mike Bianco got his money's worth. As you said, watch the end of the game from the dugout, or excuse me, from the locker room. One ball, two strikes. This one's hit high in the air on the infield. It's the third baseman, Kohler. Actually, the first baseman, Hines, makes the catch. He and Kohler with a collision just in front of the mound. Catcher and was suspended last Sunday in game three against Georgia. Still one of the crazier situations I've seen in SEC baseball. They had a 40-minute delay in that Saturday game. This was last night. Johnny Law going the left field route for his first home run of the season. Big bat flip. Mike Bianco did not like it. Long behind in the count. No balls and two strikes. And the rule in question was one that is in place to not have bench clearing incidents where you cannot bat flip toward an opposing dugout. He carried the bat about halfway down the line, flipped it into the air. Here's a chopper to short, and it gets under the glove of the Rebel shortstop, Braden Randall. And Johnny Long is on base to start things off for Mississippi State here in the top of the third inning. 
out of his spot in the eight hole on the E6. It looked like Randall couldn't decide if he wanted to come get it or wait back until he just kind of came halfway. Or not full speed, maybe a better way to put it. And Paul just went under his glove. That will certainly be an error on Randall. Now Logan Kohler batting for Mississippi State. Squares to bunt, takes ball one. Kohler, the transfer from Memphis, originally from Little Elm, Texas. 6'1", 195. They went for a short stretch early in the season without Kohler. Kind of affected the infield defense a little bit. He is a good defensive third baseman. And he also swung the bat really well at Memphis. Obviously, it has not translated so far this year here at Mississippi State. But if he could find it, he certainly could add some pop to this state lineup. Kohler takes strike two. Thought that one ran off the plate. He's behind in the count. One ball, two strikes. Made one of the better defensive plays you'll see at third base, diving and robbing a base hit down the line. Then had a pop-up that he didn't handle for just his third error of the season last night. One ball, two strikes. Just missed. Count goes to two and two on Logan Kohler. Batting in the nine hole for the Bulldogs, who trail three to nothing here in the top of the third. Only hit so far for Mississippi State. A single on the infield from Dakota Jordan back in the first inning. Shift on for Kohler, and he fouls it back. Mason Nichols had retired four in a row prior to Johnny Long reaching on the error to start the inning. Good battle here between Mason Nichols and Logan Kohler. Strike three called, Kohler goes away looking. That's the third strikeout for Mason Nichols. Chris Lamonis in his sixth season as the head baseball coach at Mississippi State, 2021 national championship for the Bulldogs, the first in school history, 188 wins in his time in Starkville. 329 career wins, was at Indiana before Coming to Mississippi State. Yeah. Top of the order, David Mershon swings and misses. He struck out to start the ball game. And the off speed's been really effective so far for Nichols, especially against the, the left-handed hitters for State. That changeup's been really good. Coward just took strike three. It was a good first pitch changeup to Mershon right there. Four hits and four RBI on the weekend for Mershon. This one gets through the leg of Nichols. There was no tag on the bag at second base. Now a throw back to second. Mississippi State's Johnny Long has gone off the bag. He is tagged out for the second out of the inning. So the, the ground ball was right on top of the bag and was fielded by Randall. Yeah, I and he just made the bag at second base. And then you have to tag the runner because he had already touched the bag. Yeah, I'm not so really not sure Long touched there. the bag or not, but ultimately got tagged out anyways. So you think well, we, they both missed the bag? I, I, I don't think Long I think Long just veered off to the right. That was something. We saw some plays last night that were unusual, and here we are in the third with a play you don't see very often. And I guess the right play would have been there for Johnny Long to slide into second base. So two down in the inning and a runner at first for Mississippi State, David Mershon, who will reach on a fielder's choice. See, that was your uh, your old 6-3-4 put out, right? This ball lifted out into the left center gap. That's well hit by Hunter Hines. It one hops the wall. 
Mershon coming to third. He'll come around to score. Mississippi State is on the board. That is an RBI double for Hunter Hines, his 34th run driven in this season. Yeah, Hines just goes with this one. Looks like that's a change up that's up. Hines had seen that one time through the order, and the second time he hammers this ball in the left center. It was kind of mishandled this a little bit, but Mershon runs well enough. Don't think that would have mattered. It was going to be a run. Mississippi State does take advantage of the error earlier in the inning. And a guy who can easily tie the ball game with one swing of the bat, Dakota Jordan. 15 home runs on the year. 48 runs batted in. Had a home run on Friday night. Missed this one, though. Pops it up on the infield. Randall, the shortstop, calling for it. Makes the catch, and Mississippi State strands a runner. But the ball here. Those, I, I did a double take on those numbers. Sixth appearance, he has worked an inning and two-thirds this year. He's given up one hit, has one walk, and one strikeout. Yeah, he's been a one-hitter guy. Didn't face a left-handed hitter. Don't think that's what we're seeing here today. Power arm, that fastball in the low 90s. Good sweeping breaking ball. Gets a swing and a miss. Andrew Fisher behind in the count. One ball and two strikes. Singled and scored in the first inning on the two-run home run for Ethan Leger. Big hole to the right of the second base bag, and that is where Fisher hits it. A base hit up the middle. Again, just to the right of the second base bag. Amani Larry was pulled way over. Bulldogs didn't have the full shift on, though. It's two ground balls, almost the same spot for Fisher today. Remember, got the ground ball basically up the middle the first time. They, they shift a little bit left this time, and Fisher pulls it a little more. Two for two day for Andrew Fisher. First two hits of the weekend for the Rebels' first base, but now Ethan Leger comes to the plate. Leger takes ball one. By the way, it appears LSU got the memo too about struggling the year after you win the national championship. They are three and eleven in the conference right now. Mm. Down two games to none in their series with Tennessee and Knoxville. Tennessee, an all-time record crowd. First time to ever have over 6,000 at a baseball game yesterday. They've expanded their stadium, and certainly they got it going. Mr. Bitello. Leger has four hits on the weekend, two of them long balls. He's ahead in the count here, three balls and no strikes. Feels like a day where we very well could see a lot of arms for Mississippi State. We think that the only arm that is not available outside of the starters so far this weekend is Brooks Auger, who threw three innings of relief last night. Strike there for Cheatham. The wind is gushing out to center field. Leger off the end of the bat, fouls it off first base side out of play. Yeah, this is as good a hitter day as you can have. It's warm, it's sunny, so you can see the ball really well, and then the wind just howling out to center field. Where you know every ball that you hit is going to get helped. Mississippi State playing really deep in the outfield right now. Stepping two off the warning track. Chance in left, Isaac in center, and Dakota Jordan out in right. And this pitch is in the dirt. Ole Miss has first and second with nobody out. Right now in the SEC West, Arkansas, they've split so far this weekend. They are 12-2 in Tuscaloosa this weekend, taking on Alabama. Texas A&M has blasted Vanderbilt the first two games this weekend at 10-4. Bulldogs in third in the West. You see Ole Miss there at 4-10. It has been a struggle for LSU and for Auburn. Certainly Ole Miss in that mix as well. It's a very unforgiving league. You don't play well and you don't win. And in Auburn's case, they've got like six one-run losses or something. I mean, they, they have just been snake-bitten in the close games. Will Furness singled his first time up, takes a strike there.
Chopper, Mershon. No chance for a tag at second base as Leger was able to avoid the tag. I think David Mershon asking Eddie Newsom if perhaps Leger ran out of the baseline. Both runners move up 90 feet. That was tremendous play by Mershon. That may not have looked hard, but that was a nasty in-between hop. And he's coming full speed. The only way he could get to it was that was the only hop he could get to. But, wow, that was a good play. AJ was able to avoid the tag, but Rashawn right there. You see a good shot of him. That was a really good play. Of Mississippi State, seven losses in SEC play. Three of them are one-run losses. They lost 9-8 in the middle game to LSU. And Florida walked them off in Gainesville twice, 7-6 and 4-3. Bulldogs had a one-run win last week in the series finale with Georgia. Trailed early. Georgia opened the door, kind of midpoint of that game with a couple of costly errors. They got Mississippi State going, and the Bulldogs came from behind and won that game 9-8. to eight. There's a strike to Jackson Ross, 2-1. and one. Ole Miss leading three to one. Bulldogs got on the board with a Hunter Hines RBI double. Ross fouls this one off long behind home plate and the count evens at two balls and two strikes to the Rebels first baseman Jackson Ross. Lead off single by Fisher, a walk to Leger. Furness grounded out to short. Both runners moved up a base, so two in scoring position for Ole Miss. Ross takes that one inside, and the count goes full. A good pitch by Cheatham right there. Going off speed, a couple pitches in a row to Ross, then busts him in with a fastball. Just doesn't get the call for strike three. Ground ball to the right side, fielded by Larry. He gets Ross, but a run comes home to score, and it's now 4-1. Ole Miss gets the run back that Mississippi State got in the top of the third. Fisher scores. Leger goes to third, and that's RBI number 34 for Jackson Ross. That's a hitter with two strikes. Man on third base, you know, if you put the ball in play, on the ground up the middle, you're going to score the run. That's what Ross was able to do. Campbell Smithwick now looking for a two-out base hit. And a single his first time up and scored a run. Lays off that first pitch. How's this one into the seats down the left field line? Campbell Smithwick did not play in game one. The 8-0 win for Mississippi State on Friday night. Last night had a career game with three hits. So four hits on the weekend for the freshman from right here in Oxford. Yeah, and last night was the first time that we have seen him anywhere but catcher. Right field last night, playing right field again today. Talked to Campbell Smithwick on the field before the game today. I said, you ever played outfield before? He said, eighth grade. There you go. Said we had a catcher that was older than me that was really good. That one runs inside, three and one now to Smithwick. Well, the swing's going to work. There's no question that this bat's going to play at this level. This might look really good at the plate. So got off to a good start early today. 3 1 pitch from Cheatham. And that's a bouncer right back to the mound. Fielded by Cheatham, the underhand toss to first in time, 2017 and 2019. Connor Hyzak in the cleanup spot to lead things off for Mississippi State here in the top of the fourth inning. He popped out to second his first time up. That ended the first inning. Hyzak, third on the Bulldogs team in SEC play, chases that one up and out of the zone. Actually, that's not right. 
He's leading Mississippi State in SEC play with a 352 average coming into today's game. I got too many pieces of paper around me. I was looking at the wrong one. You do. You've got a lot sitting around you, those stat sheets. I've got mine all in stacks, so I have like two stacks. Can you find what you're looking for when they're in stacks? Uh, that's what you're here for. Clearly, I can't either. <laughs> <laughs> Scattered across like two I counties. I was not going to be the one to correct you because I would have never found my state SEC only stats. 2-1 to Isaac. Misses low. It's 3-1. Isaac, the transfer from VCU. It's been a nice pickup for Mississippi State via the transfer portal. 3-1. Full count now to Isaac. Ole Miss got two runs from an Ethan Leger home run in the bottom of the first inning. Rebels added a run on a sacrifice fly in the second. Bulldogs got on the board with Hunter Hines, RBI double in the third inning. This one's popped up right side. Tough sky. Hill trying to find it, but it's Jackson Ross who hauls it in. Fair or unfair, Missouri was kind of a punchline to start off the SEC season. They struggled in non-conference play, but Missouri Tigers have played better as of late, had the sweep against Florida. They've got now five wins in the SEC. Yeah, three of those five in the one weekend. That that's was right. certainly a big weekend. They may look back, and that's what gets them in the SEC tournament. I mean, literally that weekend – Maybe what gets them there. They also have handed Kentucky its only loss in SEC play. Kentucky Wildcats 14 and 1. Yeah, how about that? One ball, one strike. Bryce Chance at the plate. And that Kentucky Missouri series was tight the whole weekend. It was. Kerry Jackson's a really good baseball coach. Had an opportunity last year to see them a bunch in Memphis. That one nips the corner. Count goes to a ball and two strikes on Bryce Chance. He flew out to center field to start the second inning. I think Kentucky's got one more win than that. I've got him 14-1. Yeah, got that 14th yesterday. An incredible start to conference play for Nick Mingione's ball club. Tennessee and LSU playing the third game of their series today. Same thing with Vanderbilt, Texas A&M. South Carolina down in Gainesville. They've gotten the first two against the Gators this weekend. Two two from Nichols. That one missed just low. That's a call you really want as a pitcher. That pitch was low, probably just below the bottom of the strike zone, but it's where you'd love to live. You definitely want it on a day like today when it's a hitter's day. Keep that ball in the ballpark. You want. Basically from the ground up. Full count from Nichols to Bryce Chance. Chance chops it left side, fielded by Fisher. And they're two down. As much as I would love to update you, on scores for the Masters, I'm not going to do that because my guess is some of you that are watching this are recording the Masters and you plan to go back and watch it in its entirety. The weather we have today in Oxford, carbon copy of Augusta, Georgia. Amani Larry takes small one. Florida Gators did get South Carolina today, by the way. That is the only final in the SEC. So they do salvage a Sunday game, 11 to nine. Ooh. Early start in Gainesville for that one. Backswing caught Birch there in the helmet, so he will adjust. Knocked his earpiece out, too. Got to have that. These days you do. <laughs> no other way to call a pitch. Got to be able to hear. One ball, two strikes. If you'd been asleep for the last 15 years or so and you were a baseball person and you woke up, you're like, wait, what? What do you mean earpiece for a catcher? Yeah, or an, or an armband for some pitchers and a microphone, or excuse me, a 
The receiver. Receiver, thank you, and the hat of the pitcher. The one-two. Hit high into the air, foul, third base side. Fisher trying to find it, fighting the sky, and he will make the catch, and Mississippi search to lead things off for Ole Miss. He singled the opposite way in his first at bat today, back in the second inning. Ole Miss has scored in each of its first three at bats. Two runs in the first inning, one in the second, one in the third. Bulldogs only run came at the top of the third inning, four to one. Where we stand is Ole Miss bats here in the bottom of the fourth. Birch takes strike three. Goes away looking, and that's the first strikeout for Cole Cheatham since coming into the game. He paints the outside corner. Backdoor breaking ball. Probably a little away. Nice job by Long framing it. He starts to go up down. Brings, that, brings it up. Makes that pitch look like it's in the zone. Ole Miss as a team has struck out three times today. Two of those have been looking. Blue kill in the second inning. Birch here to start the fourth. Braden Randall at the plate had a sacrifice fly in his first at bat. Randall ahead in the count, two walls and no strikes. Talk about that kind of streaky Ole Miss team. When you when you look at that last three weekends, Ole Miss played at Knoxville and then that Kentucky team that right now nobody's beating, and at Arkansas. It's a nasty three-week stretch that Ole Miss has had to play. Obviously did not have much success in that three weeks. Neither has anyone else. Both of these teams have had tough stretches on the schedule. Mississippi State had to go to Texas A&M and go to Florida in consecutive weekends. Bulldogs managed one win in each of those series. The Florida series is the one that they're really kicking themselves. Two ninth inning leads that they let get away. Braden Randall draws the one out walk. So coming into this outing for the season, Cole Cheatham had worked an inning and two thirds. He had walked one and he had struck out one. He has worked an inning and a third so far here today with one strikeout and two walks. He's given up one run. Chris Lamonis over in the Mississippi State dugout. A nice visit with him before the game today. Said wild game last night. He said, yeah, I guess it was good for somebody. When you have a four run lead in the eighth and then you hit a homer in the 11th and you hit a homer in the 12th and you're the visiting team. It's certainly a night where you would have expected to have won. Luke Hill has yet to reach base today. Grounded out in the first, struck out looking in the second. It's this one on the ground. Larry moving to his left. He'll go back to second and that throw is off the mark. All the momentum for Larry was carrying him toward the first base side. Tried to pivot and go back and just could not make a clean throw to second base. Yeah, I think he makes the right play going to second. They're not going to turn a double play on this, but Larry has a little bit of trouble getting it out of his glove and then just a little bit high. Marshawn can't keep the foot on the bag. Sometimes when you're going that way with one out, you know you can't turn. Here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Ethan Groff at the plate. We're off a couple of pop outs to first base today. This ball lifted out to right field. Dakota Jordan drifting back toward the track, makes the catch. Tagging at second is Randall. He'll go to third. And Luke Hill stays put at first base, two down in the inning. That was officially scored. Fielder's choice for Luke Hill and Randall safe at second on the throwing air. Andrew Fisher two for two. Couple of ground balls up the middle. Mississippi State with a 
similar defensive alignment. Now they make an adjustment as Mershon, the shortstop, moves to the right side of the second base bag. Big swing there by Fisher, comes up empty for strike one. Yeah, keeping Kohler on the left side of the infield, basically in his normal spot. Everybody else to the right side of second base. All in a strike now to Fisher. So you saw a second ago that defensive alignment. In the last at bat for Fisher, we had Mershon over on the shortstop side of the second base back. But they are now squeezing that hole where Fisher has gotten two base hits today. Yeah, they'd also pulled Kohler completely over to the right side of the infield before, but the man on third, they don't want to just give away a bunt base hit for a run. Two and one to Fisher. Swings over the off speed, and the count evens at two balls and two strikes. Yeah, it's two breaking balls that Fisher has not seen the spin at all. Way out front. Runner at first goes. There's a swing and a miss. That's a big strikeout for Cole Cheatham, his second since entering. High ball slash pop outs. Two hits, one run unearned. Three strikeouts and no walks so far for Mason Nichols. Michael O'Brien will lead things off for Mississippi State. The DH batting in the seven hole, bottom three in the order. Scheduled to start things off for the Bulldogs. O'Brien, Johnny Long, and Logan Kohler. First pitch strike to Michael O'Brien. This is first start of the season. 15th game in which he has played. Still looking for his first hit. Swings over the top of the breaking ball on the hands. Behind in the count, no balls and two strikes. And good back foot breaking ball right there. As you said, right under the hand to the left hand hitting O'Brien. The 0-2. That one just off the glove of Birch. Couldn't squeeze it after a foul tip by Michael O'Brien. O'Brien helpful there. The block up by Birch. Mississippi State started playing baseball in 1885. Ole Miss was a few years later, 1893, when the Rebels began playing, and that's when this series began, back in 1893. Chopper to first, fielded on a big hop by Jackson. Ross takes it himself for the first out of the inning. I thought you were going to say that's when Jim Ellis and David Kellum started calling <laughs> games. <laughs> You said that, not me. <laughs> Let the record show. Two longtime radio voices of these two programs. Both of them do a great job. Both at 45 long years, time. I think. Long time. 45, 46 years for both Jim Ellis and David Kellum. Career crowning achievements in consecutive years for them as yeah, well. How about that? How cool is that? Jim Ellis in 2021. See him in the radio booth beside former Mississippi State pitcher Jay Powell. Able to call that final out at the College World Series and see Mississippi State celebrate. One ball and one strike now to Johnny Long. Ron Polk was hanging around the booth earlier today, too. He was the analyst for the first two games of the weekend. Told me, he said, I only work part-time. <laughs> Got it, Coach Polk. There you see David Kellum, longtime voice of the Rebels. He had that same honor that Jim Ellis had in 21 and 2022. We had Ole Miss beat Oklahoma in the championship series of the College World Series. First national title in school history for both teams in consecutive years. 
Leger, high fly ball to left, has to wait on it to come down. <laughs> Johnny Long Appreciation Day it continues is. here at Swayze Field. How about Mason Nichols? He just keeps Mississippi State on that front foot. They're reaching. That's why we're seeing so many fly balls. He's given up two hits in the ball game today. There's been one hard hit ball, though, in the game, and that was Hunter Hines going the opposite way out into the left center field gap, a one hopper against the wall. Here's Logan Kohler, and he takes a first pitch strike. Kohler struck out looking his first time up. No home runs, 14 driven in this year for the Bulldogs' third baseman. He pops this one up, left side of the infield. Fisher's the only one over there. And he makes the power slider. Colby Holcomb facing Ethan Leger to start things off here. This ball hit high in the air, left field, chance going back, and it's gone. That's the second home run of the game for Ethan Leger in the third of the weekend, a solo shot, and Ole Miss leads 5-1. to one. Well, The first home run of the day, Leger did not need any wind help. This one, the wind did help. This is just a fly ball that he gets up, gets enough carry, and Rebels add to that lead up 5-1. to one. Fastball right in the middle of the plate. AJ said, gets enough of it. The ball carries just to the left of the 365 sign. And Rebels add on. You and I were talking during the break in between innings and said, you know, that certainly doesn't feel like a day where four is going to be enough. And yeah, your and that, point is just because of the yeah, weather. Yeah, something gets Nichols throwing great for Ole Miss, but it's just such a good day to hit. Fly ball's got a chance to get out of here and get a couple of bloops and then a ball up in the wind, and that's a three-run swing. You see a good shot. And it's actually shifted a little bit, maybe even helping the ball to right field a little bit more. And there it goes straight back out yeah, to center. It's, it's just a good win today. Former hitting coach, that's my kind of win. Three and zero. Oh. Johnny Long, he's hurting right now. It looked like that ball hit him in the hip. Catcher's different breed, though, huh? <laughs> I don't get it. Ball bounces out in front of home plate. I think he gets him right on the right, yeah, right, on the right hip. Look, Will Furness had a big leg kick waiting on that pitch that he took. Three and one now to the Rebel DH, who has a single and a ground out. Man, that's a five-pitch walk. Lead-off solo home run and a walk, and already activity, guys moving around. There's nobody throwing on the mound right now in Mississippi State's bullpen, but they've got guys up and moving around. Two innings from the starter. Evan Sierra gave up five hits, allowed three earned runs. Cheatham worked two innings, gave up one hit and one run. Also had a couple of strikeouts. Colby Holcomb, the third pitcher of the game for Mississippi State. Strike there to Jackson Ross. That home run ball from Ethan Leger traveled 377 feet with an exit velocity of 100. That adds to Keith's theory about the wind helping it. Yeah, well, like he didn't hit it at all, but last night that would not have been a home run. No. One ball, two strikes down to Jackson Ross. Behind in the count with a runner on first and nobody out of the inning. Good block by Long right there. It was a tough ball. That's a breaking ball. Landon in the left-handed batter's box, well out in front of him. Hard to keep that one close. Did a nice job.
Two and two to Jackson Ross. He's picked up an RBI today. And he chases one out of the zone, goes down on strike. Second time today that Ross has struck out. On the heels of a big night last night at the game winning two run single. Got a line drive up the middle just past Mershon, diving for it. And Ole Miss walked it off to even the series with a 10 9 win in 12 innings. Here's Campbell Smithwick. That one hits him on the foot. And that's the second free pass of the inning. Though Smithwick would say maybe nothing free about that one. You see a lot of hitters in college that don't try to avoid the ball at all. Looks like Smithwick was trying to get out of the way of that one. Moved his back foot, just didn't move it enough. And after that leadoff homer, Holcomb's got himself back in trouble here with a couple of free passes. Solo home run, walk, strikeout. Hit batter, and now Eli Birch to the plate for Ole Miss. Birch takes one inside corner for strike one. Birch from Bixby, Oklahoma, transfer from Chipola College. Played a lot of good baseball at Chipola through the years. You know, a lot of guys in the SEC out of Chipola. 1-1. Check swing, strike two. Couldn't hold up. Has Holcomb thrown one, maybe two breaking balls that have actually been strikes? But he's gotten guys to chase. Maybe having a little trouble picking it up. Elevated fastball there, and the count goes full to Eli Birch. Yeah, when you throw hard sometimes as a hitter, when you're facing a guy that throws hard, you, you cheat a little bit on that fastball. And that 94, 95 mile an hour fastball, and all of a sudden it's a hard slider, hard to lay off that ball. Full count with one down. Birch pops it up. Shortstop Mershon backing up and makes the catch. Two down in the inning. Colby Holcomb trying to work around some self-inflicted damage here in the fifth inning. He gave up the solo home run to Leger to start things off. Made it a 5-1 game. Since then, he's gone walk, strikeout, hit batter, pop out. And he's facing the nine-hole hitter, Braden Randall who has a sacrifice fly and a walk today. Randall chases one up, fouls it off. Ole Miss has had traffic on the bases in every inning so far, and they've scored in all but the fourth. High fly ball to center field. Hyzak took a step back and now drifts in and makes the catch and will miss. Strands a World Series. Out of Taylor, South Carolina. He played with Northwood Little League. He comes from a baseball family. Dad was in the Reds organization after playing at Illinois. A couple of uncles that played college baseball. Brother Playing at Furman. Rashawn swings through that, uh, through that one. And Chris Lamonis has described David Mershon as the energy guy for, for Mississippi State. Certainly not the biggest guy. Two home runs on the year, 27 driven in, and a 339 average coming into today's game. Mershon takes strike three. Second time that he's K'd in this ball game. And there's one down here at the top of the sixth. Yeah, credit by Bianca with the pitch call here. Marshawn early was out front on off speed. Right there, two strikes. Might be able to make Bianco calls fastball. Executed certainly well by Mason Nichols. And 
Third time through the order, see if State sees Nichols any better. Fourth strikeout of the game for Mason Nichols. Got pitch inside for ball one. It was pitch number 70. Nichols has been really effective today. Filling up the strike zone, getting the outs. Not a lot of strikeouts, but sometimes that keeps the pitch count down. Mason Nichols played high school baseball at Jackson Prep. So he'll pitch fouled away. Had a pretty good guy working with him when he was in high school. Jay Powell spent a lot of time with Mason Nichols. Mentioned earlier that Jay working as the radio analyst for Mississippi State today. To start, Mississippi State won a World Series with the Miami Marlins and coaching high school ball now. And one of the really good guys, too. Really good guy. This one's hit high into the air out into center field. Groff gets to the warning track. He settles and now works back forward. And that's a big out because Hunter Hines reminded you last night how far he can hit a baseball. Yeah, just missed that one. But if you're an Ole Miss fan, you're holding your breath right there and that ball goes up in the air because you're not really sure when it's going to come down. Off the bat, you didn't really think it had enough. And then you look at Ethan Groff and he – I think he played that pretty well. He yeah. went almost all the way to the wall and then worked his way back. Two down for Dakota Jordan, who's one for two. I think he'd like to have that swing back. Jordan started the game last night 0 for 3 with three strikeouts, but got it going later in the ball game. Jordan out into right center field. Groff moving to his left. And Mississippi State of the series between the Bulldogs and the Rebels. Mississippi State has won seven straight series against Ole Miss. Rebels trying to not only end that streak, but pick up back-to-back -back SEC wins for the first time since opening uh, the opening weekend of conference play when they got the first two of league play against South Carolina. Luke Hill off the fist, out into shallow center field for a base hit. That's the first hit of the ball game for Luke Hill. Our next SEC storied premieres on Monday night. Bama SB chronicles the 2012 Alabama softball team that stormed through the season and knocked off perennial powerhouse Oklahoma to capture the first ever national championship in women's college softball for the SEC. It's Monday at 9 Eastern, 8 Central here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. He'll one of the runners for Ole Miss over at first base. Up and in to Ethan Groff, and he just bows away from that one. Yeah, buzz the tower at 93. That'll make sure you're awake. Probably does more for you than coffee, right? You get the heart going a little bit. Luke killed 9 of 10, and there he goes. A hit and run, though, and Groff fouls it off. Luke Hill got a good jump there. Yeah, it just felt like an opportunity for Ole Miss to run. You're up four. Certainly got a guy that can run at first base. Holcomb, not, not the quickest guy to the plate. Ball and a strike to Ethan Groff, 0 for 3 with three pop-outs. There goes Hill again. Johnny Long from his knees throws to second, not in time. Stolen base number 10 on the year for Luke Hill. He's in scoring position. And Long tries to go knees just to get rid of it quickly. Doesn't get enough on the throw, and Luke Hill easily into second base. I think that's 11 for 11 against Long stealing so far this season. Yet to throw a runner out. Luke Hill, they never even looked at him. It's a bunt, and that's a good one by Groff. No throw, and probably a good idea because Luke Hill was ready to try and come home if that ball went to first base. We have a bunt single for Groff. Yeah, 
Hill's got third base stolen. I'm a little bit surprised Groff ended up bunting it because Hill was going to walk at the third if he took the pitch. But he'll take the base hit and Rebels at first and third. And now Andrew Fisher coming to the plate. Two for three in the ball game. He's got a couple of singles up the middle. Struck out swinging in the fourth. That was the last hitter that Cole Cheatham faced. Groff now takes off. A fake throw to second. It's a stolen base for Groff. And Ole Miss decided to be aggressive this half inning. Yeah, I think the combination with Holcomb on the mound and obviously Long behind the plate and the right base runners on for Ole Miss and the lead, it certainly led to them being very aggressive here on the bases. Nobody out in the inning. Luke Hill at third, Ethan Groff at second. Big swing and a miss there from Fisher. Dangerous point right here for State. Ole Miss an opportunity to get this one much more comfortable, even on a day with the wind blowing out. Just down four right now. You start looking at that scoreboard down six, seven runs with three at-bats left. It starts getting a little bit more daunting. Fisher singled and scored in the first, singled and scored in the third. He's ahead in the count here, two and one. Chases one down. Holcomb got him to swing over the top of the breaking ball. Two balls and two strikes with Ethan Leger on deck for Ole Miss. Chopper foul up the third baseline. drive off the bat into Fisher out into right field. Hill comes around to score. The throw comes to the plate. Cross slams on the brakes at third base. It's an RBI single and a three hit day for Andrew Fisher. Yeah, that's the and is facing Holcomb and takes ball one away. Ole Miss has scored in five of six innings but single runs in four of those five half innings, trying to turn this one into a big inning. You know, Ole Miss aggressive on the bases early in this inning. You wouldn't think that Andrew Fisher would be running, just one of two on the year. Scott Klein signaled something. I have no idea what. I, I don't either. Called time, talked the other three umpires, and now we're back playing. 1-0 pitch, line to second. Larry able to climb the ladder. Didn't have a chance to double off Fisher. That's the first out of the inning. A big one for Mississippi State because it brings now the double play into the conversation. Nice job by Larry going up and getting that one. Like you said, big out for State. Now they are one pitch away. Facing Will Furness. Single, ground out, and a walk. Meeting on the mound here for Mississippi State and perhaps a pitching change. And with the left-hander ready in the bullpen and left-handing hitting Will Furness at the plate, I would anticipate that's what's coming. Signal goes to the bullpen, so the day is over for Colby Holcomb. Works an inning and a third, gives up four hits, couple of earned runs. Two men on base belong to him as well. Ole Miss in front, six to one. We'll tell you about the new pitcher when we come back. Luke Dotson making his eighth appearance of the season for Mississippi State. He's not recorded a win or a loss. 432 ERA, 14 strikeouts. 
It's not quite two an inning, but he has been a strikeout guy coming in from the left side to face the left-hander, Will Furness. Yeah, low 90s with the fastball. Going to have an overhand kind of 12 to 6 breaking ball. There's a bent stat show really high percentage of fastballs that he throws to both right-handers and left-handers. Dotson, a two-way guy from Mississippi State, an infielder as well. Freshman from Marietta, Georgia. Fourth pitcher of the game used by the Bulldogs. Ole Miss leading at 6-1 to one with runners at the corners and one out here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Fisher goes back standing. Ole Miss has Ethan Groff at third base, Andrew Fisher at first. Three straight singles to start the inning before the line out from Leger. Trainer talking to Johnny Long. Kind of flexing that right leg. Chris Lamotis will. And so this was the last time Furnace was up, so he's been in the game a lot since then. I mean, that ball hit him, and it certainly hurt. And you see, that was in between innings while he was taking the warm-up tosses. I guess not in between yeah, innings, but is making in. the pitching change. It kind of reeks into his shin guard, right knee. Eastman for Johnny Long. And Luke Dotson finally gets to throw his first pitch. Came out, went through his warm-up tosses. Threw a pickoff. And the first pitch that he delivers to the plate is a strike to Will Furness, a 90-mile-an-hour fastball, paints the outside corner. One down, runners at the corners, 6-1. Ole Miss leading it over Mississippi State. Rebels batting in the bottom of the sixth inning. And this ball is lined out into left field. A base hit the opposite way for Will Furness. Groff comes home to score. Fisher goes first to third, and it's now 7-1. to one. Still nobody out. Wow, what a sweet swing by Furness right here. Fastball really right down the middle. Furness stays through it, just hammers that ball to left field. Good base running by Fisher at first, able to get to third easily, and the Rebels just continue to add on. Two-hit game for Will Furness. Ole Miss has 11 hits now as a team. Luke Dotson, the left-hander, now dealing with Jackson Ross, who is 0 for 3, does have an RBI, goes after the first pitch, lifts it out into center field. Hyzak going back, makes the catch in the warning track, but that's a sacrifice fly for Jackson Ross. Andrew Fisher comes home to score, and it's now 8 to 1. Nobody does it better in this league hitting sack flies at Ole Miss. Is an effective way to get that run in from third? And this was about a 387 foot sack fly. Fisher scores easily, and Rebels do put a cricket to cricket number up here in the sixth. So those three straight singles to start the inning all come around to score. Two down now in the inning for Campbell Smithwick, who's been on base twice. He singled and scored in the second, grounded back to the pitcher in the third, hit by a pitch in the fifth. Smithwick ahead in the count, two balls and no strikes. Campbell Smith was the 6A Mr. Baseball Award winner in the Mississippi Player of the Year. At Oxford High School, his senior season after his family moved from Conway, South Carolina. This is where Coastal Carolina is. That's a great ballpark. Yes, it is. Three balls and a strike to Campbell Smithwick. Pretty good Owls baseball program as well. They've got a trophy. They do.
Smith would get 463 as a senior at Oxford High School. Will Furness at first base after the RBI single. Full count pitch coming to Smithwick from Luke Dotson. And he gets him to swing through a fastball at 91. Since then, 10 straight retired by Mason Nichols as he toes the rubber here in the top of the seventh inning, having thrown 75 pitches so far. And he misses up for ball one to Connor Hyzak. Pitch kind of depends on the umpire. Some umpires are calling that strike right at the belt. Some are not. The 1-0. Found out a play 1-1 one one now to Hyzak, who is 0-2 with a couple of pop-outs today. Ball and two strikes now to Hyzak. Hyzak was one for three on Friday night in the 8 0 win for Mississippi State. Scored a run. One two pitch hit on a line to short. Handled there by Braden Randall. That ball was hit hard and looked like it was maybe even knuckling a little bit. Can't hit any harder than this one. As they break a ball, the hijack, st hijack stayed back on and <laughs> went right past Randall. Like you said, sometimes those balls are knuckling, and it did kind of look like he played it that way. I don't know if it was like a knuckleball or a cutter. I mean, it was like trying to make a left turn as we looked out at it. But allowed out. And now Bryce Chance up the middle. That's past the diving Randall. A one-out single for Bryce Chance, and that snaps the streak of 11 straight retired by Mason Nichols. Breaking ball out over the plate. Randall can't get to it. Like you said, it's been a while since State had anybody on the bases at all. That's the third hit of the game for Mississippi State as Amani Larry comes to the plate. Larry scored a couple of runs in last night's game for Mississippi State. This one off the glove of Fisher at third base. That was another hard hit line drive. And it was hit hard, but my guess is Andrew Fisher tells you he's supposed to catch that ball. Yeah, the reaction time's so short when you're at third base, playing kind of even with the bag over there. This ball was just crushed. But certainly Fisher got a glove on it. That's three good swings in a row, and that may very well do it. For a pinch hitter here for Mississippi State and Nolan Stevens. Stevens pitched in last night's ball game. Another one of the two-way players for Mississippi State. So Nolan Stevens now in the seven hole in the lineup for the Bulldogs. And he takes strike two. Gunnar Dennis at one point was the Friday night starter for Ole Miss. Obviously had some struggles. Went to the bullpen and here he is on a Sunday afternoon trying to help Ole Miss get the series win. 0-2 pitch, takes something off, and he gets a swing and a miss for the second out of the inning. After a couple of hard ones there. Yeah, big sweep and break ball, and that was back-to-back -back for Stevens, neither one of which did he get a very good swing at it. So a line out to start the inning, then back-to-back -back singles from Bryce Chance and Amani Larry. Gunnar Dennis comes into the game. 
And now this is Joe Powell batting for the first time today. Powell came into the game as a defensive replacement for Johnny Long, who had some sort of an issue with his right knee, or at least that appeared to be what the issue was. He was kind of rubbing that night right knee behind the shin guard. 2-0 now to Joe Powell, who's hitting 294 on the year. The 2-0 runs inside, 3-0. Hey, Eli Birch did not like that call from Javero January behind the plate. Ole Miss catcher kind of dropped his glove, made it pretty obvious he did not agree with that call. 3-0 to Powell, and it's not close. And that's part of where Gunnar Dennis has gotten into trouble. You saw the strikeout numbers, 38 of them on the year. But he's only about 2-1. to one. Strikeout to walk ratio. And now Mississippi State has the bases loaded for Logan Kohler in the nine hole. And we saw Stevens get a steady dose of that big sweeping breaking ball. See if that is what Gunnar Dennis does to Kohler. As you see a right-hander and left-hander for Ole Miss up in the pen. First pitch strike to Logan Kohler. Struck out looking in the third inning. He popped out to the third baseman to end the fifth inning. 0 for 2, looking for a hit to try to help Mississippi State climb back into this game, and he takes slow it away. Paints the outside corner, and the count goes to one and two. Bases full of Bulldogs. Bryce Chance at third, Amani Larry at second, Joe Powell at first, and Logan Kohler batting. With two down in the top of the seventh. Good take by Kohler. There's a tough ball for left-handed hitter to lay off of. That sweep and breaking ball started in the zone, breaks out. Two balls, two strikes. Dennis, now three and two. Nowhere to put him. Runners like, will get a head start here. Yeah, I think it feels like his command's been better with the off speed than the fastball. I would guess Cole is going to see that sweep and breaking ball right here on 3 2. Full count pitch, runners go. It's down and away, and a run comes in for Mississippi State on a bases-loaded walk. Kohler picks up his 15th RBI of the year. And it was the fastball. Nice job by Kohler laying off, and State inching their way back in with an opportunity here. Put a whole lot more pressure on Ole Miss. So after a strikeout of Nolan Stevens. For Part of the reason Mason Nichols was so successful today, he pitched ahead. Whole day. Did not walk a batter the entire six and a third that he was in. That run, by the way, is credited to Mason Nichols. First pitch strike here to David Mershon. Top of the order. Big spot for Mississippi State. Down eight to two. Looking for a two-out base hit. As they try to climb their way back into this game in the final three innings. Mershon chases one up and is behind in the count 0-2. David Mershon 0 for 3 in the game with a run scored. He chases one in the dirt. It was handled by Birch. Stepped on home plate, Javero January. Bottom two, then top of the order for Ole Miss. And Eli Birch goes after the first pitch and fouls it back off the fists. Luke Dotson on the mound for Mississippi State. Fourth pitcher of the game used for the Bulldogs. This ball hits sharply. It's off the foot of Dotson. Caroms out into left field. 
We have seen some hard hit baseballs over the last inning. And it's a rocket right back through the middle. Like off, off the, the left, left toe. toe. Yeah. yeah. I think we saw that the same way. Uh -huh. It was going to be a base hit up the middle if it didn't hit the left toe. Ended up being a base hit to left field. Looks like Dotson okay on the mound. And Birch with his second base hit of the day. Second. Second inning was when the first one came. Here's a bunt, and that's a good one down the third baseline. And Dotson and the third baseman crash into each other. Throw back to second just in time. Birch able to get under the tag out there. Kohler and Dotson collided right on the chalk. Yeah, Dotson just trying to make a play there. That's Kohler's ball all the way. Dotson's got no shot at throwing Randall out at first base. Not sure Kohler does either, but that is good. <laughs> see a lot of baseball and won't see that. Lost it all. That was a pretty sweet bump by Randall, by the way. Kohler kind of decleated dots in there. Yes, he did. Went low. Looks like Dotson's going to be okay. Kohler, that's second collision today for Kohler. Remember, pop up earlier, Hines and Kohler ran together. That's right. Cool. So a bunt single for uh, for Braden Randall, and Ole Miss has first and second with nobody out. Top of the order here for Luke Hill. Might mm -hmm. the Rebels bunt again. Yeah, Ole Miss not a team that sack bunts much, but certainly you might see it here. Hill does not square, swings at the first pitch. And that one's going to fall in front of the center fielder. Hyzak tries to get it to second in time for the force out. Everybody had to kind of freeze and see that one down. Three straight hits to start the inning for Ole Miss. Yeah, blue pit out to center. Hyzak did a good job acting like he was going to catch it. Raised the glove. Randall at first kind of held his ground a little bit. And the Rebels coming right back here in opportunity. With the base is loaded, to add on to this. Ethan Groff at the plate, and we have reached the point of the game where one swing could end the game. That's right. Ethan Groff has five home runs on the year. Ten run rule in effect in SEC games after seven. Obviously, the trailing team gets to bat, whether it's the home team or the road team in the bottom of the seventh inning. And this ball's hammered to left. That ball goes all the way into the corner. Bird scores easily. Randall comes around to score. Luke Hill going to try to come to the plate. He'll do so without a throw. A three-run double for Ethan Groff. And Ole Miss now leads it 11-2. Well, Hill ran straight through a stop sign at third base. This starts off with just a rocket by Groff down the third baseline. Ball stays just fair. Two runs going to score easily. Mike Clement trying to hold up Hill all the way. Hill runs through the stop sign. You can see Mike Clement at the bottom of the screen. I think State's going to appeal at third. I think they think he'll miss third base. We'll see. Dotson will have to tow the rubber, then step off. Well, and maybe that looked like that was the no. indication they were going to give, but not now. Runner on second. That represents the winning run with Andrew Fisher at the plate. A three hit day for Andrew Fisher. Three singles and an RBI. He scored three runs. An 11 to two lead for Ole Miss in the bottom of the seventh inning. If the Rebels are able to score golf from second base, this game will be over. You don't want to make too much out of one game, but that, that win for Ole Miss last night emotionally was a really big win. Certainly they have looked good all day today. Fisher ahead in the count, two balls and no strikes. Ethan Leger on deck for Ole Miss. Cross got a huge lead out at second base. Dotson really not paying much attention to him, and Kohler, the third baseman, is well off the bag at third. 
And Croft wanted to steal third, there's no doubt. Dotson held on to it long enough. May Groff bounce back towards second. The 3 0. That's a four pitch walk to Andrew Fisher. Fourth time he's been on base today. Well, if you're all missing, it's the guy you want up right here. Two home runs today, one yesterday. His one out today was a line shot to Larry at second base. Five runs driven in on the series. That's Leger at the plate, even though you're seeing Fisher's numbers. He just walked, and Fisher's been on base four times. Mississippi State going to make a pitching change. He stands at second base and represents the winning run. Via 10 run rule, Ole Miss up 11 to 2. Schulke with a toss out to second base. I don't think you're going to see Ethan Groff bunt here. No, I think they're more worried about Groff stealing third than the bunt at the plate. This ball lifted. Shallow right, and Hines makes the catch in foul territory. For the first out of the inning. A little surprise Groff didn't tag right there. Hines running away from that play. That's going to be a difficult throw to third. Schulke a third of the way to what they brought him, uh, for what they brought him in to do. I think Schulke got the out they brought him in to do. <laughs> that is one pitch, yeah. one out. D.H. Will Furness. Furness has been on base three times. He's got two singles, has driven in a run. Furness hits the ball in the air to left field. Chance on the run. Chance watches it fly over his head. It's a walk-off. Three-run home run for Will Furness. And Ole Miss takes a series against Mississippi State for the first time since 2015.